I just feel like it's a very community-driven conference. It also is a lot of quality, and people are just nice. Hi, right, my name is Sarah, and this is Asian Conf in Donbin. Amazing venue. Austria is beautiful. Meeting all of the people in the community and getting to go and hang out and ski. Well, am I live? Cool. Yeah. So, hello guys, my name is Andre, and today we're going to talk about lifting state up in our React applications. And before we start, I'd like, well, I have a request for you. Could those of you who used lifting state up at least once raise your hands? Come on, don't be shy. I'm pretty sure that's almost everyone in this room, because, well, we tend to keep our state somewhere high in, in the tree of our components. And now, could those of you who deliberately moved state of the applications down, could you raise your hands? Yeah, perfect. At least now I know that, that my talk is not completely useless. <laughs> All right, so a few words about me. Um, I like calling myself a full-stack TypeScript and JavaScript developer. That means front-end, back-end, and that my ass is almost always on fire. Um, I used to work for two major Russian outsource companies, and now I'm happy to be a part of the family at Hazelcast. And last but not the least, I truly love open source with all my heart. So before we get to the meat of this talk, to the actual coding, tips and tricks and stuff like that, let me start with the source and the historical context. So what do we do at Hazelcast? We built a fancy in-memory data grid. Uh, I know it sounds kind of complex, maybe. So, but what it really means, it's a distributed cache. It's scalable, easy to deploy, distributed, and it can, can be AP or CP, your choice. It has a bunch of enterprise features like near cache, like um, out of heap memory storage, and what's even cooler, that it's open source, and we got official clients for tons of languages. And the product that I'm working on is our management center. Like any decent distributed system, we have some kind of administrative panel where you can go and see cluster statistics, cluster monitoring, data structure statistics. You can browse your data and see what's inside of your cluster. You can have some kind of scripting and alerts. And you can administrate your cluster. So once at our internal hackathon, I came up with an idea of displaying our cluster as an actual graph. And just so you can imagine the scale, um, our cluster can run hundreds of nodes, and we can have thousands of clients. And the data inside of the cluster is distributed across all of the members. So I wanted to display roughly tens thousands of nodes. Well, I have a confession. Uh, the demo at Hackathon went really well, smoothly, because I worked only with three members, and that's how POC usually go, right? You display something small, something, something simple, you raise a PR, and everybody forgets about it. But it got me thinking what limits we can push our React applications to. So um, today, we're going to build a very simple data grid where you can, you can click on a cell, and it's going to display a check mark in that cell, hopefully. And first, we're going to lift, lift our state up, exactly how React official documentation suge suggests us to do. And here's the plan. So we're going to create a very naive implementation. We're going to refactor it using standard practices. Then we're going to see where it fails and why. And after that, we're going to move state of that application down and see if it helps us to mitigate the problem. So now let's get to the actual coding. Um, it's going to be a live coding session. 
more or less. I'm not that cool as Vladimir to do the actual live coding. I'm a single-threaded person, so uh, I cannot really speak and code at the same time. I prepared a bunch of commits for you, and we're going to apply commits one by one and see where it gets us. So before we take a look at the code, actual code, let me show you what we see in our browser. So that's the data grid, and you can click on a cell, and it displays a check mark, as promised. So now to the code. Um, is it big enough for you? Cool. So we have here our initial field, which is a two-dimensional array of size by size, and size here right now is 10, so it's a two-dimensional array of undefined 10 by 10. We have our parent component app, and we um, use set the initial state of that component to our initial field, that two-dimensional array. Then we iterate over that field and get the rows. We iterate over each row and get the cells and cell IDs. And then we render a cell component where we pass the content of the cell and we pass set content function where we do some ugly stuff, right? It looks pretty ugly without Emer, but I didn't want to complicate this um, code too much. So, and I wanted to use basic React API. Um, so what we do here, we copy the, all the routes besides our target route. That's this stuff. And for, the tar for our target route that we want to update, we copy all the cells besides our target cell. And for our target cell, we update its content. Now let's take a look at our cell component. It's extremely simple. We have two props, content and set content, and content that's actually that checkbox that we have. And set, con set content is something that is called when we click on that cell. So now to explore if we have any performance problems, let's increase the size of the field to, to 100. Control S and see, well, we have a huge grid here. Click. And it doesn't seem to have any problems at this point. Uh, but for, luckily, lucky for me, and unlucky for you, I have a pre performant laptop. So uh, let me throttle my CPU a little bit and see if I have a problem now. Click. And it takes quite some time to render. Click. And it took quite some time to render again. All right, so not everyone out there is going to have the most modern laptop, right? People are going to use our applications from cell phones. I don't know, maybe one day microwave would be able to run React. So um, let's try to profile this baby and see where it gets us. The next commit. and the most naive profiling by console log. That's all that was added, that console log statement. And let's see where we are. We have these 100 cell rendered statements because we rendered the initial field 10 by 10. Now let's click on a cell, and we see another 100 statements. There we go. There our performance problem origin. So. Uh, if you Google briefly how to optimize list renders, the most top voted Stack Overflow answer would be to add keys. And I guess React actually suggests us to do that, right? So let's do exactly that. Let's add some keys. I applied the next commit. And here we go. Here we have a key. And let's see if it helps. So now you can see that. There is no error in our console. Click, and we still have 100 renders for every cell. So basically, the whole field is re-rendered when we try to update only one cell. Uh, if only there was a way to see why a certain component re-renders. Luckily for us, amazing React team 
provided us with outstanding dev tools. And we have Profiler. And what we're going to do is we're going to record a session. We're going to click on the component. And then we will see why every cell is re-rendered. Uh, so right here on the, on the right, you can see that why did, it, why did this render? And it says that props change set content. All right, let's go to our code and see what the hack happens here. So we apparently use field from the outer scope from right here. And that's a problem. That's the source of our problem. Uh, when we update only one cell, whole field is updated. And therefore, every set content has to be updated because it used field from the outer scope, right? Let's try to work around that. Next commit. And what we can see here right now, that cell now accepts row index, cell index, and set content, the same function for every cell. Let's take a look at what set cell function looks like right now. So now it accepts not only the new content, but also row ID and cell ID. And for setting the new field, we use a callback signature. So what we have here is our old field passed as a parameter. And we use that old field to do basically the same thing that we did before. Uh, but now we don't have a closure, and we don't use the field from the outer scope. So that should be good. That should help us. And for our cell, we use uh, we have two new props, cell ID and row ID. And we pass that props, those props to set content. That's basically it. All right, let's go there and see if it helps us. Click, and we still have 100 renders. OK, profiler to the rescue. Let's record a session. Click uh, ranked chart. So why did this render? The parent component re-rendered. And it totally makes sense. Let's go back to our code and see what happens here. So now, when we update a field, when we update our field, we update the state of our parent component, and it, it re-renders. And because because it re-renders, it triggers the render of, our, of each of our cells components. OK, and if we Google one more time, the second most top-voted answer on Stack Overflow would be to use Memo. The other way to go around it would be to use Pure Component or Should Component Update. So now we have Memo, and what's going to happen at, is that if we don't change props of our cell, the cell won't be re-rendered. Pretty cool, right? Let's go back to our application and see if it really helps. Click, and only one cell rendered. Woohoo! We kind of solved the equation, right? Um, and here's the question, why am I here, and what is this talk about? <laughs> if it works. If we follow we, by just following the docs. Um, well, yes and no. Let's increase the size of our field to the same hundred. It's going to take a while. Let me actually uh, disable that throttling. It's going to help, hopefully. Um, yeah, and uh, probably I should have disabled throttling before rendering the field. <laughs> yeah, and it's not going to close because the thread is blocked. All right. Yeah, yeah, I can kill it. We can wait. You can go grab some coffee in the meantime. Woo! Yeah. All right, once again, here we go. And we, have, we should have field 100 by 100. Update. All righty. Let's wait for it to show. Yeah, now we rendered. So click, 
and it's pretty fast. And now let's go back to performance tab and throttle my CPU once again. 6x slow down, click, and it was kind of eh, click, kind of laggy, but well, it's not really obvious. Let's make it 15, 150. You really should go and get some coffee. <laughs> All righty, here we go. Click, it's OK. And after throttling, click, and it takes some time. Click, and it has rendered only now. All right, so what's going on? Uh, let's go to our profiler and try to, like, to profile this baby and see if we see anything weird. Click. So in our rank chart, we see that the actual render of the actual cell that we trying to update took only 0 0.2 milliseconds. But something happened inside of our app that took enormous 160 milliseconds. And that's why we see the lag. So what happened there? Um, if we look at our code, we don't see anything unusual. We follow all the best practices. But if you take a look at this number, we still have 22,500 22, cells. And even if we render only one cell, React still has to go over 22,500 22, cells and compare the props. It's extremely fast to compare the props. It's all one. But React has to do that for all 22,000 cells. So um, if we can't move our state up, can we move it down? And maybe that is going to help us. The next commit, a lot has changed. Uh, but don't worry, we're going to go over it line by, line by line and see that it actually is not that different. So now we have a class combo class field, mm, field class which accepts its size in constructor. Uh, we have the initial data that's going to be our field. And it's the same two-dimensional dimen array, size by size, filled with undefines. We have cell content method to get the data from that field. We have set cell method to update the content of that field. And it's the same copy paste from our old set cell method. So I'm not going to go over, go over it line by line. And we have map method to iterate over the field. Let's take a look at our app. It's much smaller now. We just, oh, and by the way, we just somewhere uh, before taking a look at our app component, we initialize our field with the size variable. It's 10. And in our app component, we iterate over that field. And we do the same thing. We iterate over each row and render a cell. And now our cell accepts only row index and cell index. And let's go to our cell component. So cell component uh, calls set cell with row index and cell index of our field. And it uses a cell content method to get the actual data. Let's go to the browser and see if it works. So let's click on a cell. And nothing happens. We have an empty field. But take a look at the console. We still have that set cell record in our console. Why? What happens here? Now, as our field lives outside of the React, it's a standalone JavaScript class instance. React doesn't know when to re-render the data. React doesn't know that something happened in our field and the data was updated. So we have to somehow help React. 
and tell React that it has to re-render. And what are our options? If we used class components, we could have used force update, but we don't use class components, and it would kind of suck to rewrite it to class components at this point, right? Well, it's not too hard because we have a very simple case, but for, for a more complex application, it, it would kind of suck. Um, what are other ways to update, to force React to re-render a component? We can either change its props or we can change its state. If we change the props of the component, then uh, it would kind of kill the whole optimization. We try to keep props the same. So we left with only one option. We have to change the state. And that's, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to introduce this uh, ugly function called useForceRender. And inside of that function, we're going to have an internal state, integer state, which is initialized with 0. And when we want to trigger a force re-render, we just add 1 to our current state. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, and et cetera, et cetera. And now we have to somehow subscribe to field updates of our field. So we're going to add an empty object of subscribers to our field. Um, we're going to add a method called subscribe cell updates, which accepts row ID, cell ID, and some kind of callback, which should be called when that cell is updated. And we add that callback to our map of subscribers. And if we take a look at our cell set method, set cell, sorry, um, what changed here is that now we look up the cell subscriber callback from our map of subscribers. And if, if one found, we call it. Our app component didn't change at all, but our cell component now um, calls that custom hook use force render to get that force render function. And it calls use effect. And inside of that use effect, it subscribes to the cell updates of our field and passes that force render function there. So now let's go back to our browser and see if it helps us. So now we click, and we have our check mark. Pretty cool. Uh, and I want to tell you that, actu that this actually solves our performance problem. But you don't have to trust my word, and we're going to actually go and increase the field size to the same 150. That's going to take quite some time. All right, here we go. And I have to throttle my CPU. And now click, click, click. It's blazing fast. Woohoo! <laughs> and let's take a look at our profiler. So now when we click on a cell, it shows only one render because we eliminated that expensive uh, recalculating process that happens inside of React. If you're interested in that, you can Google reconcile, reconciliate, reconciliation process. And uh, I think that Sophie had a great talk about that. So I think that if you Google it, you can find it pretty easily. Um, and the last step. We have missed one crucial step to our refactoring. And that's unsubscribing from cell updates, because now um, our code is a subject to a memory leak because we subscribed and we never unsubscribe. Always remember to unsubscribe if you subscribe to something. So now we add unsubscribe cell updates function uh, and we delete our callback from the map of subscribers. And for to our use effect, we pass a function that will call that unsubscribe cell updates uh, once 
cell component is unmounted. Let's go back to our browser and see if it still works. And it does. Cool. All right, and to the final words. So don't do any premature optimizations, please. I mean, um, rules are meant to be broken. Uh, that's for sure. But you got to have a very, very um, valid concern. And you got to have a good reason to break a rule. Because in 99 out of 100 cases, lifting state up works, and it works great, and everybody knows what that is. I mean, really, don't do it, guys. <laughs> um, so here are two links. Uh, the first link is the source code of that, um, of that implementation. And the second link is the article that this talk is based upon. Um, and here are my contacts. If you ever need me, just ping me on email, on Twitter. And QR code is the, contains the link to the slides. Um, so um, happy to be here. And let's learn how to build better software together, guys. Thank you.